All right, guys, the time has come. After releasing the introduction to physical computing video, I could sense that there's some pent up demand to learn about this very subject. And that is so super exciting. So this is going to be a multi-part series where I take you from beginner to advanced concepts. Each episode will be building off of each other and then we'll end the series with a final big project. And that is going to be some sort of an interactive kinetic sculpture. But I'll keep that a secret for now. I have something brewing in my head, but you have to stick around to see what that is going to be. And if you have no idea what physical computing is, be sure to check out that very first video so that we're all on the same page. But let's not get too ahead of ourselves. In today's video, we're going to be doing the very basics, which is to blink an LED. But before you start rolling your eyes, don't, because that is exactly what you need to get your feet wet. Blinking an LED is basically the hello world version of physical computing. So now let's talk about what you need. In terms of the hardware, you need an Arduino, an LED, a 220 ohms resistor, a breadboard, and some jumper wires. I'll be using this official Arduino Uno board, but there are also other options since Arduino is an open source hardware, meaning that the company has shared the hardware designs, making it possible for anyone to create their own versions of the board. And as for the software, you need to download the Arduino IDE. And IDE stands for Integrated Development Environment. And this is what is going to allow you to write and upload the code onto the Arduino to do all the very fun stuff. All you need to do is go to the Arduino.cc website and then click the software here. And then you just pick the download options that is compatible with your operating system. The current version is 2.3.3. All right, are you all set? But before we go any further, I actually want us to take a little bit of a deep dive into this little guy first. So. Let's do that. An Arduino is a beginner-friendly microcontroller or a mini computer that you can program to control electronic components. It doesn't have a screen, a keyboard, or an operating system like a typical computer, but it can follow instructions to perform tasks like turning on lights, reading sensor data, or controlling motors in response to code. In the introduction to physical computing video, I categorized the way that we should approach physical computing into three buckets. Input, processing, and output. Input senses what's happening in the surrounding environment. Processing acts as the brain, taking in the data from the input and deciding what action to take. And then output creates an action or effect in the physical world, like turning on an LED. So now let's look at how an Arduino corresponds to the three different buckets. So we're going to start with processing or the brain of the board. And on the Arduino Uno, it is this piece over here which you can see labeled as AT Mega 328P. This is the brain of the board, responsible for executing code and controlling connected components. This is what gives the Arduino the ability to handle processing tasks, execute code, and manage input and output pins. Pins are these small metal connectors on the Arduino board that serve as input and output points for sending or receiving electrical signals. Input and output refer to the direction of data flow, whether data is coming into or going out of the Arduino. For input, data flows into the Arduino from external components, such as sensors or buttons, which the Arduino reads to gather information. And then for output, data flows out from the Arduino to control components like LEDs or motors, which the Arduino writes to perform specific actions. So to put it simply, pins are these physical connectors with input and output to indicate the direction of the data being sent or received through these pins, while signals are types of data. And there are a total of two types, digital signals and analog signals. Digital signals have two states, on or off or high or low. And this is like flipping a switch, while analog signals represent a range of values. And these can vary. And we can use this data to do things like changing the brightness of an LED. And as you can see from the board here, there are a total of 20 physical pins, six on the left with the letter A in the front from A0 to A5, and we call these analog pins. And then there are a total of 14 on the right from 0 to 13, and we call these digital pins. And to understand how these physical pins, the data direction, and also the types of signals all work together, let's look at this table. 
on the rows here, we have the type of signals, and then on the columns, we have the direction of the data flow. All right, so in this first box here, where we read digital signals, we can use digital pin as expected, right? And then in this second box here, where we write or send digital signal, we can also use digital pins. And this is exactly what we're gonna be using to send some data to turn on and off an LED. And then for reading an analog signal, we can use an analog pin as expected. But this is where it is a little bit maybe confusing because to write analog signals, we actually cannot use analog pins. We will be using digital pins instead, specifically the ones with the tilde sign or this squiggly symbol in front. These pins are often referred to as PWM pins, which stands for pulse width modulation. This is a technique that allows us to simulate analog output by rapidly switching between high and low states. So basically we're generating digital outputs in a way that is so fast that it seems like or it looks like it is generating analog outputs. Don't worry if you have no idea what that means right now. I'll go into the details in the next video. Right now, just know that we will be using digital pins, specifically the PWM ones, to write analog outputs or to send analog signals. So you might have the same question that I had when I first learned about this, which is why not use analog pins for analog outputs? And that is because Arduino was designed to be affordable and easy to use. So to use true analog pins, that would add some more cost and complexity and PWM pins actually offer a flexible solution to this without adding any more complexity. All right, let's talk about the last component before we start the hands-on example, which is power. So how do we power an Arduino? You can power it via a USB cord, which you connect here to the computer, or you can plug in an external power supply, which can be a seven to 12 volts DC power adapter or a nine volt battery. And the Arduino board comes with a voltage regulator, which can bring the higher voltage down to five volts, which is the power that is needed to power the board. Now we're ready to dive into the first hands-on example. So we're gonna start by connecting the Arduino to the computer via the USB cord. You should see a small light on the board turn on, which means that it receives power from the computer. Next, open up the Arduino ID that we just downloaded. And then before we start coding, we need to tell the software which board we're using. And all you need to do is you come to select board here. And then this is mine. It's the Arduino Uno. And it is connected via this specific cable. All right. You can see that the template is split into two main parts, right? Setup and loop. And this is very similar to how P5 works. Setup function runs once while loop, just like draw, on P5 runs repeatedly. But instead of actually writing our code here for the blink example, what I'm gonna do is that I'm going to go to file and then example. And then as you can see here, there's a bunch of basic examples that you can use. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to basics and then we're gonna go to blink. And this is going to be the sketch we're gonna be using. All right, so let's start by looking at the blink sketch here. So at the top here, what do we have? We have this whole part that is commented out and it basically just tells us what this blink sketch does. So blink turns an LED on for one second, then off for one second repeatedly. Okay, so most Arduinos have an onboard LED you can control. On the Uno, Mega, and Zero, which is what I have right now, which is an Uno, it is attached to digital pin 13. All right, and then we also have the names of when it was created and modified and by who, and then the example code is also available on the Arduino website. And here we have the two chunks of code, right? One in setup and then one in loop. So it is similar to the P5 sketches that we usually do, but this is the simplified version of C++, so it is not JavaScript. So as you can see, writing the function, you start with the word void. 
and then we have setup which is the same as what we have in p5 but then for this repeated set of code it is underneath the function called loop all right so let's look at the setup we have this one function here called pin mode and pin mode initialize digital pin led built in as an output so basically it takes in two arguments the first one is the number for the pin right and then the second one is whether it is input or output so what is the direction of the flow so basically we're setting pin 13 which is led built in as an output but what is special about this pin so as mentioned in here is that it is actually already being built onto the board so basically what this means is that we can test the code without having to wire anything up at all like external circuits so this is great and then inside the loop here we have two functions that are being called twice so we have digital write and it also takes in two arguments the first one is the number the pin number led built in which is 13 and high is turning it on so it basically turns the led on right high is the voltage level and then we have this second function delay and then an argument of 1000 so delay basically pauses whatever the program was doing for a certain amount of time and 1000 this is 1000 millisecond which is one second so so these two lines of code basically say send a signal to led pin 13 to turn on high and then do that for one second and then as you might have guessed in the second two lines here it basically is doing the opposite so write a signal to led pin 13 and then set the voltage to low and then do that for one second so it is doing the blinking action right it turns the led on for one second and then it turns it off for one second so once we have the code what we need to do is that we can come to this here you can see that it say verify and verify basically is checking the code or compiling the code to make sure that this whole thing is okay with no errors and then this upload basically upload is doing two things it's verify the code and then it uploads it onto the arduino so i'm just going to click upload compiling sketch uploading all right and then now you can see that the led is blinking switching back and forth every second so what we want to do next is how about we set this to 500 and then we try the same thing all right and then now the led the built-in led is blinking faster at half a second back and forth now that we're able to blink a built-in led on the board let's start wiring up the circuit so that we can actually blink the actual led all right so before we do that i want us to go to the documentation page to do that i'm actually going to go to the arduino website again and make sure that you use it as a resource to actually learn a lot about the arduino because there's just like so much that you can learn from here and i'll show you how to do that so how about we go to documentation and then i'm going to search blink all right maybe it's this first one this is a sketch that turn an led on and off every second and this is basically the sketch that we are currently working on and on this page here you have the hardware required which we have here which is the arduino board which we already have and the optional hardware are led and 220 ohm resistor and they say that these are optional because you can actually use the built-in led which is what we just did right but if you actually want to wire an external circuit like this you also need a breadboard and some jumper wires so let's look at the circuit so all right they're talking about using the built-in ones okay so here look at this cute image you can actually just follow along how to wire 
the circuit from this picture here but then there is a schematic down here and the schematic basically is a simplified version of how all these electronic components work together to create a circuit so maybe we look at what is written here first so if you want to light an external led with this sketch you need to build this circuit where you connect one end of the resistor to the digital pin corresponding to the LED built-in constant. And in our case, it's pin 13. Connect the long leg of the LED, the positive leg called the anode to the other end of the resistor, and then connect the short leg of the LED, the negative leg called the cathode to the ground. So as you can see here, the LED actually has two different leg lengths. One is longer than the other. In the diagram below, we show an UNO board that has D13 as the LED built-in value. Okay. All right, so what is a resistor? A resistor is essential for safe operation as it limits the current flowing through the LED, preventing damage to both the LED and the Arduino's output pin. It says here that typical for red, which is the red LED, the voltage that we need is between 1.8 to 2.2 volts. And because the Arduino is being supplied with 5 volts, we're basically using the resistor to limit how much electricity can pass through the LED. So just imagine you have some water that is going through like this pipe and the resistor basically just kind of like closing the gate down a little bit so that less water is going through so that it doesn't actually damage stuff inside maybe not the best analogy, but I think you can understand. 13, pin 13 to... Long leg to the other end. And then the resistor to this. And we put the other leg to ground. All right, and now our LED is blinking every half a second. Perfect. All right, so we completed the Hello World version of physical computing, which is blinking an LED on and off every second and every half a second. So I hope that you enjoyed this. And in the next video, we'll be learning how to do a little bit more complicated stuff, such as reading analog inputs, reading digital inputs, and then use that to control something like an LED blinking or something more complicated. So let's see, let's go.